Hi, I'm Jeff Lane. I'm with the Mount Washington Avalanche Center. I want to talk a little bit today about doing beacon inspections. And it seems as though every season you want to do a comprehensive beacon inspection. And what that involves is a little bit more than your standard function check that you would do every time you go out on a tour at the trailhead. But once a season you'll want to look at things like the transmit range, the search range, and the physical pieces of the beacon. So we'll show you how to do that today. And the very first thing you want to do is actually pull out your beacon and take a close look at it. So when you start your beacon inspection, the very first thing you want to do is take a look at the physical parts of the beacon. So what that involves is actually taking your beacon out and you want to look at it and inspect the outer case. You're looking for cracks, you're looking for anything with the display that might not look quite right. Take a look at all of the, all the pieces of the harness system. There's a lot of little plastic buckles on here, plastic pieces. You want to make sure all the buckles are actually working and present where they should be. And you want to make sure that the harness fits, fits you the way it's supposed to fit. In addition, open up the battery compartment. Ideally, you know, you, if it were last season and you're starting out the season this way, you'll want to add your batteries to it. But before you put them in, take a look at the contacts and look to see if there's any kind of corrosion whatsoever in there. And there's some things you can do to clean, off, clean it off. But if you have bad corrosion, your batteries might not actually work. So this one looks pretty good. There's no corrosion, it's a fairly new beacon. I'm gonna replace my batteries. And as part of this physical inspection, the first thing I'm gonna do is, I'm actually gonna turn it on, and I'm gonna watch it as it goes through its startup cycle. Everything should come up as it normally would, and depending on what beacon you have, it'll tell you whether or not things are going good, or you wanna look for things like all the lights turning on, if it makes noise, it should make its noise. I should be getting a sign. Yep, I'm getting a flashing light where it should be. And I'm currently in send. So the next step after we've done that exterior and battery compartment inspection is we're gonna actually wanna check the range. We're gonna to wanna to look at the transmit range and the search range. And there's some ways that we're gonna do that. To set up for the initial signal acquisition test range, Place a transmitting beacon on the snow surface with a long axis pointed in the direction you'll be coming at it from. Turn your beacon to search and walk well out beyond the range of the beacon. Slowly walk back toward the transmitting beacon until your searching unit consistently displays a signal. Take note of the actual distance from this point to the transmitting beacon. This will be different than your display shows. That's okay. It's the actual distance that matters. Try this a couple of times and if possible do it with a different beacon that is of the same model. Each beacon, regardless of the model, should be able to transmit approximately the same range. Your distance here will be more of a function of which model you use to search with. So like the last test, put the beacon to be tested in the snow and walk outside of the range of the searching beacon. Just like in the signal acquisition test, you want to take note of where you first pick up a consistent signal. If you're testing multiple beacons, use the same unit to search for each transmitter. All of your results should fall within a similar transmit range. Your exact range distances may vary. The important thing is to know how your beacon normally works and look for inconsistencies from year to year when you do further testing. So depending on what model beacon you have, there's a few other things that you're gonna to wanna to check. One of the things that's common to a lot of more modern beacons is an auto revert to send function. And so I have a, a tracker with me right now. And with a tracker, it's really important to know your beacon, but with a tracker, in order to turn your auto revert on, when you turn your beacon on, you need to be holding down your button. So I'm actually on right now, I'll turn it off briefly. And I need to press down the SP button until I see it turn to auto revert. Okay, so I just got the AR signal, which tells me that the beacon is in auto revert mode. And so what I'm gonna wanna do now is actually turn it to search. I'm gonna set the beacon down. It doesn't need to be in the snow, it can be on your kitchen table or wherever. And I'm just going to start my watch and I'm going to see how long it takes for this beacon to signal that it's going back to send mode. Whatever beacon you have and whatever settings you have it for, it should, it should follow those settings. So in this case, I believe it's four minutes, it should turn back to send. When you get uh, decreasing wind speeds. So if you've gone through all this inspection and everything checks out okay, you're all set. Don't forget to do a full beacon function check before each and every tour though. 
If you have any concerns or questions, your best bet is to contact your Beacons manufacturer and tell them what's going on and see what they recommend. And remember, if you have any doubts, don't be afraid to retire your Beacon and start shopping for a replacement. Thanks a lot for listening.